Groovy. Hey everybody, Jim here. I was recently tagged. Uh, apparently, this is going around. Uh, it was started by Billy the Gaming Chode, who then tagged Michael B the Game Genie, who then tagged Weekend Game Guy, who then tagged me. So that's the series of events that have led to me actually being on camera. This is quite a rarity these days, actually. I don't do a lot of these. Um, but I was tagged by Weekend Game Guy, Mr. Chris Long. Uh, very awesome fellow here on YouTube, and I encourage you all to go check him out. Um, but basically, I think it, originally it was five gaming facts about me that nobody cares about. Um, that's a little specific, so Chris basically did just five facts in general. And that's what I'm going to do too, because I don't necessarily have a whole lot of unusual gaming facts to share with people. Um, so I've just chosen five things about me that some people surely don't care about, but uh, others might find a little bit interesting. So, number one, um, I actually spent a large portion of my early childhood in a convenience store uh, that my aunt and uncle run. Um, basically they would babysit me there, and I, I would just spend a lot of time there, basically getting free snacks, free sodas, and what have you. Uh, and that was really awesome. I was probably like, you know, when I was like five and six years old, I would spend a lot of time in that store. Uh, the store is actually called the Country Mile. It's a small country convenience store in, uh, Hathaway, Louisiana. Uh, I'm actually from southern Louisiana. I don't know if any of you actually knew that or not. Um, so I spent a lot of time there, uh, and at a, a certain point they got a couple of arcade cabinets in there. Um, one was a game called uh, Tubin, I believe, where you're a little guy in an inner tube and you try to navigate him around obstacles as he's going down this river, which was fun enough, I guess. But the uh, other arcade cabinet they got in there, uh, one of their first two, it was a Street Fighter II uh, arcade cabinet. The original one, I believe it was in early 1992 they got that. Uh, and that was actually my first time playing Street Fighter 2. Um, they would actually pull a stool up to the cabinet because I was too short to really reach the controls and I could get quarters out of the register. Um, I was the only person that got to do that, by the way. The only one who got to play free games of Street Fighter 2 in their store. So that was my first experience actually with Street Fighter. Uh, six years old, I believe, in 92, playing uh, Street Fighter 2 in my aunt and uncle's convenience store. That's where my, my love of Street Fighter began, and it persists uh, to this day. <clears throat> Number two. Number two actually kind of ties in with the first one. Uh, it has a lot to do with my love of movies. Um, I love movies pretty much as much as I love video games, actually. Uh, there's actually... <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you can see all these games back here, and there's boxes of games everywhere. In a back room back there, there's boxes with nothing but movies in them. I have probably as many movies as I do video games. Uh, my love of movies, again, started there in that convenience store, because in addition to being a convenience store, it was also a video store. They had a whole video rental section. And while I was staying there and they were looking after me, uh, I could essentially just go and take whatever tapes I wanted off of the shelf and then go back around behind the counter where they had a VCR and TV set up. And I could sit there and watch movies all day long and eat as many snacks as I want and drink as much soda, uh, uh, soda as I want because it was all just, uh, you know, I'm their little nephew and little five, six year old kid. So they're like, yeah, sure, you can have chips, soda, whatever you want. Just shut up. Here, watch these movies. <coughs> So at five and six years old, I could basically take uh, whatever movie I wanted off of their shelves and watch it. And as a small child, uh, two genres of movies that I watched more than any other were one, horror movies. I was, uh, I especially loved Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, and uh, Child's Play, actually. <laughs> I would watch a lot of horror films there, which seems a little odd for like, you know, five, six year old kid to be watching these R-rated horror films, but I loved them. And even though they gave me nightmares, I frequently had nightmares, but I didn't care. I thought the nightmares were worth it to watch these movies. 
And the other genre was like cheesy 80s, early 90s martial arts action films. And I really especially loved, oh my voice is cracking for some reason, I really loved uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme, even his like really crappy ones like Cyborg and stuff like that, I could just watch those over and over again. And the other movies that I was just enamored with as a small child were the American Ninja movies. Uh, if, you've, if you've never seen American Ninja or American Ninja 2 or 3 or 4, however many of those they made. Uh, they're pretty awesome, they're really cheesy, um, but I, I like them a lot. I, I think they're a lot of fun to watch. Today, in fact, I still like watching Van Damme and American Ninja movies, things like that. So that's really where uh, my love of movies uh, started. Really, it's where my love of movies and not video games so much, because I played video games with my older brother and my cousins um, more than that, but my love of Street Fighter really started there and my love of arcade games really started there so movies and arcade games street fighter what have you it all started there in that little convenience store oddly enough uh, okay uh, number three uh, a lot of people know that I really love heavy metal music I've um, and I play heavy metal guitar I've played guitar in some of my videos uh, the opening for my um, pickups videos the little like not a song per se I'm gonna call it more like a jingle the little jingle I did and I used to do something else and I, I've played guitar in a couple of videos so people know that I, I really love playing guitar I love heavy metal I have a few guitars in the back back there uh, a lot of people don't know that as much as I like heavy metal or maybe even more so I really really love blues music um, really that comes from just growing up in southern Louisiana and spending a lot of time with my dad and my uncle who both really really enjoy uh, the blues my dad especially and uh, just riding around with with my dad uh, and him listening to uh, guys like Stevie Ray Vaughan which was always one of his favorites and then uh, we would listen to some Muddy Waters BB uh, King John Lee Hooker uh, all those blues greats um, so I, I grew up uh, basically hanging out with my cousins and they all loved 80s hair metal and that really got me into heavy metal music uh, at an early age as a child. But spending time with my dad and my uncle listening to blues and then even other types of uh, styles of music like uh, Zydeco, which people who don't know Zydeco is like uh, Cajun French music. It's kind of indigenous to Louisiana, but they listen to that. So I, I listen to a lot of that type of music. Um, but blues, just in general, I love as much, if not more so, than, than heavy metal. And uh, that's something you might not have known about me, because I don't really mention that a whole lot on the channel. I don't think I've ever mentioned it at all, ever, except for maybe on, you know, doing things with Yell Chaos. Um, so, but uh, yeah, that's, that's something about me. I really love blues music, so there you go. Uh, number four. Um, a lot of people don't know this because I, I usually make it a point to never ever mention it. Um, but I actually, for a long time, uh, many years, probably like almost a decade, uh, I studied martial arts, uh, various uh, disciplines, Taekwondo, Hapkido, even some Jiu Jitsu, Karate, even wrestling, boxing. I used to be really interested in mixed martial arts. Um, and when, I think when I was about 15, I started. And um, when 20, I was like 21, I moved away from my hometown, so I couldn't practice as regularly as I wanted to. There were lots of there were a few little schools all around my hometown, and I would practice there. And then moving around, uh, I get to a new place. I have to find a new group of people, a new place to study, and that's really what got me into trying to uh, lots of different things. Because when I would get somewhere. I would just want to do basically anything and whatever was available that's what I was doing so I would do some jiu-jitsu here but then I would leave and go to this place and now uh, well I guess I'll do some karate here or I'll you know try to wrestle or box a little bit that kind of thing uh, in recent years I've more or less stopped um, I don't know I guess it interests me less it's something I might pick up again at some point um, but I actually do still have with me pretty much all the time the uh, one and to date only uh, black belt I've, I've ever been awarded. Uh, I got that when I was like 20 or 21 I think. It was quite a while back. 
Uh, but I still have that with me, just for, for whatever reason. Um, so there is something you don't know. Uh, I used to study martial arts quite extensively for almost a whole decade. Uh, so there's that. And finally, uh, number five. Uh, anyone who watches my channel is aware that I spent a number of years living in Japan, um, which was an uh, awesome, great experience for me, and I plan on going back. But uh, a lot of people don't know that before I lived in Japan, I actually lived in Europe for a couple of years. Um, in particular, I lived uh, in a city called Kaiserslautern in Germany. Uh, that was... It was Kaiserslautern, and there was Ramstein Village, and what have you. Yes, Ramstein Village, like the band. Um, so I lived there for a couple of years, and if anyone's ever wondering, I really loved it. I, I really enjoyed uh, living in Europe. I thought it was awesome. I think Germany is really awesome. And while I was there, I also had time to go and visit some other uh, northern, central European countries like France, Austria, the Netherlands, Belgium, uh, Switzerland. Uh, got around a little bit. Uh, if you're from any of those countries, well, I really enjoy uh, the time I spent in your countries, and I really love living in Europe in general. And uh, again, yeah, Germany. It was a, a really good time. Lots of uh, awesome, lots of awesome music uh, to to take in, especially if you're a heavy metal fan. Um, plenty of European metal bands roll in and out of Germany. Uh, there's even the Wacken Open Air Festival, which I unfortunately was not able to attend. Uh, almost went one year, didn't get to go. My friends went, came back, they had their cool Wacken bracelets, and they were like, "Dude, it's so awesome." And I was bummed I didn't get to go. But I did get to go watch uh, a bit of live heavy metal music while I was living in Europe. Actually, that's one of the places where I started to pick up guitar a little more. Because I had friends that were really into uh, guitar. Um, and what the hell else was I going to say about my time in Germany? I don't know. I don't remember. Anyway, uh, Germany, it was super awesome. Uh, I, I really enjoyed it there. And I enjoyed... Uh, all, all the countries in Europe that I, I got around to. Uh, great, great uh, region of the world, great place to live. Uh, and that's it. Those are five uh, random facts about me that nobody cares about. May or may not care about them. I don't know. I'm not going to tell you what to, what to feel. Uh, but um, with that being said, I actually I have to tag three people now. And... I gotta, I gotta think about this a little bit. I think the people I'm gonna tag, uh, some people, well, one person, okay, this first person I'm gonna tag, RPG Machine 86 uh, my, my buddy Andrew, he's been in and out, uh, I'd like him to come back in. I know he's working on a few new things, but uh, I'd like to hear uh, a, a few more things uh, about uh, the good old RPG Machine. I want a few fun facts about him, so that's someone to go check out. Uh, I'm also going to tag uh, Sprites and Bites, my old buddy Gareth from over in the UK. Uh, Gareth, great guy. I'm sure he has a lot of really interesting things to tell you about himself. And the last person I'm going to tag, someone who just jumped onto YouTube. He's not a stranger to social media in general, but he's really only getting started on YouTube. As far as I know, he might have done other things in the past. But uh, I just spoke with him recently on the Yell Chaos program. Uh, cool dude, uh, really enjoyed talking with him, and he's now started his new channel called PlayStation. That's a play on words, isn't it? PlayStation, because his name is Sean. Uh, so I'd like to know some random facts about good old Sean that uh, nobody cares about. Uh, so those are the three people I've, I'm tagging. RPG Machine 86, Sprites and Bites, and PlayStation. And... That's about it. So everybody, uh, if you made it through the whole video, thank you. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, come back next time for more of whatever the hell I'm working on right now. Thank you. Take care. Bye.